Hello. I've already done a CAD video that covers the concept of annotation scale because I did that when I introduced text. But it's such a common question from my students all the time, probably three or four times more than any other questions I get in terms of understanding AutoCAD, that I decided to do a separate video that simply explains and kind of clarifies the concept of annotation scale and how it works. The, the basic um, intention of annotation scale is to allow you to easily attach the proper annotation scale to any annotation in your drawing with the purpose being consistency in a print between all text heights. So for example, if you're working on an eight scale plan, like perhaps this one, now this is a really small, small, tiny building so you wouldn't really do it at eight scale, but bear with me for the purposes of this example. You would need to plan ahead at what intended scale you were going to print the drawing at. And when I say print, that means your viewport scale, because that's where you're deciding the scale when it comes to your final uh, layout on your sheet with your title block and all that. You have to make that decision really before you do any dimensions, notes, or text, or other types of annotation because then you have the size right. If you don't do it ahead of time you end up having to go back and fix it and it takes a lot more time. So if I'm going to put dimensions or notes or text or any annotation on this drawing I set my annotation scale button at the lower right to the proper scale that I'm going to show the plan in the viewport. In this case I'm using eighth inch equals a foot. Keep in mind, the scale button has absolutely nothing to do with the plan itself in terms of walls and doors and all those types of things because you're drawing it at true size, one to one. So the concept of annotation scale is strictly to get the text height right when it's shown in the viewport. That's it. So now that I have that set to eighth inch per foot, you know, I could continue doing dimensions if I wanted. You know, and obviously you, you can see the text size is consistent with what I already had in the drawing. So you set that and then you do any notes, dimensions, leaders, text, room names, anything like that. Now let's say that I'm going to work on a detail like over here. This is not going to be at eighth inch per foot or it wouldn't be much of a detail. So I need to decide what scale is this drawing going to be at. Now as a student a lot of times you're given a specific scale in your assignment so that you know the answer to that question. Otherwise, you just kind of gain from experience an understanding of what an appropriate scale is for each type of drawing that you're working on. So if this is a, uh, this is kind of the size of a base cabinet. I did it that size intentionally so that I would know that the scale would make sense. So if I set my scale button to one inch equals a foot, because that's my intended viewport scale for this drawing, now I'm ready to do notes and leaders and dimensions for this drawing. So I can add my dimension here and you can see how the text size is consistent with what I already had in this drawing. So as you go back and forth between multiple drawings you just have to set your annotation scale prior to doing any annotation on each one. It doesn't screw up anything that's already in your drawing or anything like that. Now I do always recommend in order to not screw up stuff that's already in your drawing the two buttons to the right of that annotation scale, one of them says annotation visibility and that has a little scale and a light bulb. I always leave that on. If you turn it off, what it does is it turns off any annotation that is not set to the scale that is current. Right now my scale is an inch equals a foot. So any scale that is not set to that becomes invisible or turned off. A lot of times I have students freak out about their annotation disappearing and they spend time redoing it because they can't see it. So I always just leave, leave that on and then you won't have that, that fear. Now the other thing next to that is a small lightning bolt and a scale and that's automatically add scales to annotative objects when the scale changes. So if you're changing this button back and forth between three or four or five scales, you don't really need to have all those scales attached to every piece of annotation. It actually kind of slows down your process over time because the annotation um, starts to become kind of unwieldy in terms of all these scales are attached to every one and it's really not necessary.
So I always leave that one off. So the light bulb on, lightning bolt off. If you have that on accidentally, the second one, what starts to happen is this. See now if I've changed my annotation scale three or four times, every one of those scales is attached to that piece of annotation. When you select it, it gets all flashy with these weird kind of shadow things around it. And it's kind of hard to work with. It's very annoying. So that's just one reason to leave that off. I've actually seen it in extreme cases, corrupt drawings, because the drawing starts to become so overwhelmed with all these scales attached to everything. So as a safeguard, I always leave that off. If you do have this issue of more than one scale attached to an object, then it's easy to fix. And use the same interface that you would use to attach a scale if you made a mistake and didn't have it set correctly the first time. So if I wanted to fix this, this multi-leader, I could get to the Add Remove Scales feature in several ways. So I can right click and go to Annotative Object Scale and then Add Slash Delete. That would be one way. I can go to the Properties Palette and click in the Annotation Scale field and then hit the three dots. Or I can go to the Annotation Ribbon at the top and then go to Add Slash Delete Scales at the upper right. All three of those will take you to this box, Annotation Object Scale, where it shows any scales that are attached to currently selected objects. So if I want this to only be one inch equals a foot, because it might be a note that relates to my section that's above, I can select the inappropriate scales and delete them. Delete and delete. So you really want to have only the one proper scale attached to the objects. AutoCAD gives you the ability to attach multiple scales because there are rare instances where you have the same piece of annotation showing in two different viewports, each one with a different scale. So they think that that flexibility is a good thing, and I suppose that might be in certain cases. To me, it's very rare that you actually do that. You have one drawing. It's not often you show it at two different scales, at least not the way that I usually work. So I usually just leave one scale per object and then I don't have any issues. So now I can hit OK. You'll notice that all those big flashy annoying things have gone away because there's only the one scale attached to that object now. If you want to just check and see what scale is attached to anything, usually the easiest way is the properties palette where it shows you right there the annotative scale that's currently attached. Okay, so now notice how just to review the basic concept here the text is obviously a lot larger on our plan than it is on our detail. But the whole point of doing this correctly is that when you go to your layout tab, compare the text now. It's exactly the same size. The plan is at eighth inch per foot. The detail is at one inch equals a foot. The fact that that viewport for the detail is at a larger scale blows up the drawing more proportionally speaking. And so the text looks identical when you have a print or set up on a title block on a nice layout. And that's the whole point. By setting it up correctly in model space with your annotation scale, your final layout looks very consistent and professional. So again, if you need to fix anything, you use the properties palette, you can use the ribbon or the right click menu. And uh, in general, you just set that scale button prior to doing the annotation, then you won't have any hitches. Keep in mind this is all dependent on your annotation styles being set as annotative. If they're not, then the annotation scale button is kind of moot. It won't do anything. So you can always check that by going to your text style. And if it has that little triangle annotative thing, then you know it's annotative. Obviously, this box needs to be checked for that to work. The same is true for your dimension styles and your multi-leader styles. So your multi-leader you can modify that style, make sure that that's also checked, the annotative box on the leader structure tab. Furthermore, your normal text height is 330 seconds, so then that would be set in your multi-leader style. You can set that in your text style optionally or leave it at zero if you want flexibility there. And then your dimension style would follow the same pattern. Dimension style on the fit tab would be annotative. And then on the text tab, your text height would be 330 seconds, and it needs to pull the annotative text style if you want that to be consistent. So those are your things to check if it's not working the way you expect. 
Now, this whole annotative idea is still relatively new in AutoCAD. You'll very often run into um, slightly more old school users, and you know I'm technically one of those myself. Um, but I picked up using this annotative features because I think it's easier for new students to kind of get used to. Um, but if you look at a drawing from an architect five years ago, or even um, one that's been using AutoCAD for a while, and it's a current drawing, they may not use annotative features at all. That's still relatively common. So it's good to understand how the older system used to work. How did people used to do this? You would have a table like this. So I did a quick Google and found this chart, um, but they're very easy to make if you want to make one. Uh, that shows the scale of the drawing and the intended printed text height and the corresponding text size for what you would use. So this is before annotation scale existed. So if you're using 330 seconds, you'd be looking at this column. And then if we were using 8th inch scale plan, you'd be looking at this row. So that means that your text would be 9 inches high. Now that sounds a little weird. 9 inches high, that's some big text. But think about the size of the text relative to the building. If you're looking at a building that is 50 feet long and you have text that's 330 seconds, it looks like a little tiny dot on the floor. And so the 9 inch size makes it print at 330 seconds based upon the viewport scale. So here's a little trick. If you look at the text that I have here in the properties palette, besides the paper text height, you have what's called the model text height. And look at that, it says 9 inches. So that's still the size that's actually being shown, but I don't have to use the chart or do any math. AutoCAD is doing that for me. So in the olden days, you would have just entered your text height at 9 inches. Nowadays, I can just decide what the printed text height needs to be, and AutoCAD will figure out the 9 inches for me. So that's kind of the older system, is you'd have a chart like that. So how's that chart kind of figured out? What's the whole idea here? Well, think about what a scale really means. When we're thinking about a viewport scale, I'm talking about like eighth inch equals a foot. What does that mean? It's a proportion, basically, or a ratio of the size when you measure on the plan, on like on a paper copy of the plan, relative to what it is in real life. So the ratio between the printed drawing and the actual building is kind of like the scale factor of that drawing. So think about it this way in terms of math. An eighth inch per foot is the same as an eighth inch equals or per 12 inches. All I did was convert a foot to 12 inches because obviously that's the same thing. So what's the scale factor or the proportion of an eighth inch compared to 12 inches? Basically what I'm asking is how many eighths of an inch are in 12 inches. Well, that's just simple division. So if we convert eighth of an inch to its decimal form, which is 0.125, where obviously if it was a quarter, it'd be 0.25, then you can take 12 inches and divide by that, and you get 96. So that's your scale factor. So where am I going with this? So if you multiply your scale factor by your desired text height of 330 seconds, then you get 9 inches. And that kind of makes sense because that's the proportion between what's in model space and what's in paper space. So the same concept applies to all the other scales. An easy way to think about it is generally speaking, you're taking the 12 inches and you're dividing it by whatever's on the left side of the scale. And then that's your scale factor. The only time it gets a little trickier is if you're dealing with engineering scales or if you're dealing with metric scales. Metric scales are actually kind of easier, but that's a whole other issue. So basically that's how a table like this is made, is somebody just knows those scale factors because after a while you get them memorized because 96 is an eighth and half of that, 48, would be a quarter, you know, and then half of that, 24, would be half, and then 12 is one, so it gets kind of easy after a while. Somebody did that math um, to make this table, and then it was just easier to reference the table here when you're trying to figure it out very quickly. But you'll notice it also includes the drawing scale factor column. So if somebody wanted to know what that was, it would be easy to see it right here. So you don't have to worry about any of this math nowadays, as long as you use the annotative features. If you don't want to, then you just figure out what your model text size needs to be, like the 9 inches. 
and then you would make it that size. So if I'm using a text style that's not annotative, like the standard one, and I make my multi-line text, I'm just going to type my text in here real fast. It's teeny tiny, right? Because it's not being scaled automatically. So when I make the text height, that was at 3 sixteenths. It's 3 sixteenths relative to the building. It's not being sized automatically. But if I use that idea of 9 inches, then you can see it matches my other text size. So that's your option if you don't like the annotated features. You can still do it that way. But to me, it's just a little bit harder to manage. Um, so you're kind of losing out on that new uh, ability of AutoCAD to control it via the annotation scale. Because if you decide it needs to be at a different scale now, then you have to go back to your table, look at what size it needs to become, and then go back to the properties palette and change the size. So it's one extra step. In my case, if it's annotative, I don't have to look at the table. I just select it, and I go here, and I switch the scale to whatever I want it to become, and then I'm done.